stuff back with Pat's Two Cents. I'm back. Back in the saddle. I had to take a 10-day break. I just needed it. I just needed to clear up everything. Anyway, <clears throat> I just want to tell you real quick, Latifa is still in recovery mode. I will keep you posted. She said when she feels strong enough, she's going to send me a video of her thanking all of the all of my YouTube family for praying for her so you'll get to see her for yourself god bless all of you for praying thank you very much now to our lesson for today first corinthians chapter 5 starting at verse 1 finishing at verse 2 followed by pat's two cents whoopee it is reported among Excuse me, let me say this correctly. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Now, let me stop right there. Do you know how many churches have members that are committing open sin, blatant sexual sins? They're not being sat down. They're not being challenged. They're not being corrected or rebuked because their gift is of the utmost importance or their giving is so necessary. So a lot of times we allow people to slip and slide. We allow people to slither in and slither out because we don't want to offend. What happens if we offend? We may lose that member. Well, guess what? If you lose the member, then you pray for them and hope that they get it together when the Lord comes. You don't just pat them on the back and sweep their filth under your carpet so that your church can roll on. And for those of you who are committing sexual sin, many have fallen, including myself. But you don't lay there and say, oh well, no, you repent, you stop, you clean yourself up, you seek counsel, you do whatever you got to do to get your act cleaned up. That's what God honors. It's not that you never fall. And it's not that you fall and fall and fall and fall because you got grace. You don't do either one of those. The bottom line is, even when you fall, we have the advocate. We have our advocate, that's Jesus Christ. But God knows when you're playing him. He knows when you are playing church. There is a difference between messing up because you're weak and you've got to fight to get this together, exposing yourself and everything in order to get it together. <clears throat> But the other difference is, and I've seen this in churches, where people will date four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Now, you know these people are adults. You can't tell me they're not doing something under the sheets. And when you ask them if they plan to get married, what gets me is when they say no. Well, I guess they got all the trappings of house. They play house whenever they want to. They play hubby wifey whenever they want to. But they don't have to accept the responsibility. But the bottom line is it is sin when you are not married. I know in this society, everything we do is supposed to be okay. You do you and I'll do me. But no, no, we must do God. If you belong to God, if you claim salvation, 
if you say you are a child of the Most High King and you have been born again, you better dust yourself off, take a shower, and get up out of those sheets. Because God tells us not to even eat with a person who is living that lifestyle. Tripping up is one thing, but living it is another. And many of you live it. You live a sexually uh, illicit lifestyle <clears throat> or an illicit sexual lifestyle. You live a homosexual lifestyle. You live a pedophilia lifestyle. You love little kids and you love molesting them and you do it over and over and over and over. And you think because you apologize that gets you off the hot seat. No. Some of you live a life of beating your spouse and going out and cheating on them at the same time. And then coming home and apologizing. Oh baby, you know, I need you. I can't, I'll be, I'm nobody without you. I, I don't know what comes on me. Yeah, 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 whatever. It's lip service. That's all it is. All talk, no act. And God does not want it. Now I know a lot of times your buddies will pat you on the back and they'll wink at it. and <laughs> They know you're wrong. They know you're doing your woman wrong or your man wrong. They know you're doing them wrong. But, well, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. They always had this whatever. But the first one you're doing wrong is God. That's why Romans, <clears throat> Romans chapter 12, uh, chapter 1. Ah, I got to go to it. Hang on. Romans chapter 12, I think it's 12. Ooh, help me, Lord. There it is. Romans chapter 12. This will spank you a little hiney a little bit. Says, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body." A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, you notice it didn't say present your mouths a living sacrifice. Because when you present your mouths a living sacrifice, you can say whatever you want to say about the Lord. Give him a sacrifice of praise. Oh, glory to God. Witness for him the whole nine yards. But if you're living a sinful life with your body, Don't even bother wasting your time. Don't even waste your words. All right. It says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable unto God. And which is your reasonable service. Come on, that's the least you can do. Pat's two cents interpretation. Now, verse 2 doesn't stop there and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God now have you ever heard the <coughs> chapter and verse that says do not cast your pearls before swine you heard that one, right? Well, guess what is also in that? And this is the one that really gets me. Do not give that which is holy unto dogs. When we use our bodies as a source of pleasure, sexual pleasure, sinful pleasure, um, whatever, yeah. Whatever you do with your body and your body parts, you have to remember 
that before the person you're even having sex with engages you, God is right there between you looking at the both of you. Now, one of my YouTubers is struggling with profanity, but she's fighting it. Now, what she said that got her was when I said, when you are cussing, one minute you're praising God and you're blessing and glorifying and all that, and the next minute you're cussing. You, and then the next minute you're glorifying, and the next minute you're cussing. Well, what you're doing is you're using your mouth to speak the devil's language. That's the devil, that nasty talk. That's the devil's language. It is unclean. You would never talk like that if Jesus would have manifest himself to you. Boy, you clean up your language quick, fast, and in a hurry. And I know it. Now, what would you do if Jesus walked in your bedroom while you were doing the do? What would you do? Now, if you would clean yourself up, if a supervisor came in and caught you, if another person just came in and caught you, how much more would you get yourself together if Jesus manifested himself in your bedroom? Well, guess what? He's already in your bedroom. You may not see him, but he sees you. Now, when you think about it like this, this may help you. When you are using your body parts for sexual pleasures that you know the Bible talks against, then guess what? You are having sex with the devil. Think about that. 